All right, so I'm here with Will and Kurt of Crom the Barbarian, and um, they have a really interesting tale of taking a public domain character and really doing something amazing with it, a really great argument of why things need to be able to fall in the public domain. Um, we spoke a little bit yesterday, but uh, for the viewers, can you tell us what's, what's the story behind Crom and why you chose? Actually, start with why, why it is that you're attracted to Crom. Wow. So uh, I was able to get into all 100 copies, the first 100 copies of Sword and Sorcery. Um, <laughs> back at Savage Sword and Conan, <laughs> Conan sorry. Um, when I was 14 years old. Um, so from there, I've never really let go of them. Uh, artistically, as I've grown, I've always fallen back to those black and whites. Uh, learning how to draw, drawing and redrawing them over and over again. Uh, wanted to get back into comic books. I had left comic books uh, back in 95 because of the whole independent crash. Um, and uh, Sword and Sorcery, Dungeons and Dragons, the whole Conan the Barbarian feel is what I wanted to get to. So in my research, I ended up coming across the first Sword and Sorcery comic book character, who's Crom the Barbarian. 1950, John Junta, who was uh, Frank Frazetta's first mentor um, for uh, getting into art when he was 14, 15. Um, and then Gardner F. Fox, who's a very well-known uh, comic book writer. Uh, the two of them invented uh, the uh, character Crom the Barbarian, 1950 for Avon. Um, it was actually inserted into pulp, a pulp magazine called uh, Out of This World Adventures. Uh, it was the two of them, and it did go into a third one into the Strange Worlds uh, character, uh, comic book uh, in, in 1950. Uh, with that being said, um, wanting to just draw warriors and wizards and creatures and damsels um, in an adventure, a Dungeons and Dragons type of uh, style yeah. and feel, this was all perfect for me. Um, in order to keep with the continuity though, instead of just taking something out of the public domain going, oh, it's mine now, um, I ended up finding a 1953 pulp fiction story that Gardner F. Fox wrote uh, for Planet Stories, A Sword and Planet. <laughs> Um, where he ended up, I ended up converting the character into a sword and sorcery, taking the science and turning it into magic. And it had translated really nicely, and the story itself arcs the character in a place where then Will and I could then start playing with him as uh, we kind of see fit uh, for 2015 and on. Cool. So what got you into Crom? Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, like I have always been really interested in... Uh, I sort of found it through a different method of, like, I had been reading, you know, sort of Marvel DC stuff when I was first starting. You know, like, Neil Gaiman and Sandman was, like, my first thing. And I was kind of like, oh, comics are done by only writers. And I didn't even think about the art. And then as I got more and more into it, I was like, oh, you know, there's awesome artists out there and I kind of started looking back at the founders of it the people that were doing like EC comics um, back in the day that kind of pulp uh, fiction and like short story form and uh, and I was looking at that stuff and I was like wow this is like super awesome I love these black and whites like it's all its own contained story you know you can read it it has a beginning a middle and an end and like it just hooks you in and is so awesome and so I sort of came to it from that side where Kurt was like I ah, look I have this like golden age Pulp Fiction, Barbarian, and I was like, two out of those things, three things I'm very familiar with, <laughs> and the third one I'd love to learn about. So, so it was sort of like, you know, I, I came at it from the side of really loving the artwork and really loving the story construct of it, and then he was like, here's this character that we can, you know, play with, and I was like, all right, let's look at, you know, how we can, we can really take the classics of Pulp Fiction and then kind of like flip it over and see, you know, make it work for people that are reading stuff today. So, yeah. That's really cool. And so... Um, you guys have a script written already. Um, what are the plans for when the comic itself is going to come out? 2016, we'll actually start officially working on it um, using cromthebarbarian.com as we'll be posting the pencils to the inks and um, the actual scripting itself so everybody will be able to watch it come into uh, uh, a fleshed out, finalized uh, issue as it being four issues each. Um, yeah, so. we're, we're really interested in like in controlling and having our hands on the entire process. Like we we really want to have it be more of a dialogue with people who are interested in it. So you know, putting uh, we have the script done for the first one. You know, starting the scripts for the other four or the other three issues is going to be four total. And so we want to sort of be 
be shooting out, um, you know, emails to people and showing like, you know, here's what we're working on now. It's going to be this, and then we want to get it all completed in 2016, the whole thing done, and then say like, look. We did this. We know you like it because you've been talking to us. We've been, you know, taking your input and putting it in, and like now we have this completed project and sort of putting, it, being able to put out a print run, put it out there, and see, you know, people who have already felt like they've seen a little bit of what we've been doing for this whole year kind of get their hands on it finally. So it's like really making people feel like they're involved with it and really having our hands on it from, you know, scripting to layouts to sketches to marketing to everything. Like, you know, we're going to be the two guys that are controlling it because we want it to be the vision that we have and not, you know somebody else kind of being like well you know it would sell better if you did xyz we're yeah. like now we want to find the the people that really are into this kind of cool stuff so yeah that's the exciting thing about uh rolling your own uh and in terms of um coming out with the actual print copy are you guys um looking to work directly with uh with a company to print it out or or eventually um print it out with a a, pu a traditional publisher like an idw an image dynamite and then also will there be like a digital version that people can get as well so, like, basically what we've been talking about is we, Kurt and I pay a lot of attention, especially to exactly what you're talking about, the Image, Dynamite, IDW, those exact creators, you know, we listen to a lot of podcasts or interviews with them, and uh, something that they talk about a lot is sort of uh, the, the way that trade paperbacks are super hot right now, you know, people are getting stuff printed in, and for example, there's a guy, I'm blanking on his last name, but I know his name's, first name's Ryan, does a God Hates Astronauts, right? Web series for years and years and years and years collected into trade by image and then becomes, you know, its own series. So so we're looking at putting something like that where it's like we're we're giving people access to behind the scenes stuff and then we're having these digital issues, out, like you were saying, like having digital content where it's like, we don't know if exactly if it's going to be pay what you want or pay whatever, which like... If you if you are familiar with uh, Brian K. Vaughn, right, right? He did that the panel right. syndicate where it's right. like, and he's like, yeah, I, I got more people interested in that than anything I ever published, right? So we're looking at we're looking at all the business models that are being played around with, and sort of saying like maybe we have something where it's pay what you want and the content's out there, and then we sort of take it to you know an IDW or an image of the world and be like, look, there are these many people that like it. We want to print it into a trade. Like, can you you know can we work together on this? Or maybe it's something where we just do um, you know our own fundraising to work on a self-published we're not totally set on that that's sort of the, the future that we haven't figured out but but you know we want to feel like we have you know a business understanding of, of the way it's going to be eventually put into people's hands like we don't we don't want to just send it off into the wind and hope that it gets into people's hands so we're looking at digitals and we're looking at prints it's all up in the air but you know we we're thinking about it <laughs> and being down here it's about um, this all being fundamentally the start so with that being the start, everybody that gets into th these uh, uh, these issues, next Baltimore Comic Con, we'll have the four issues of the, the story. That's awesome. Uh, so come here and get these three. We're only doing a limited printing of them. So everybody that gets them here is like, come check them out. Next year you're going to get like, you know, all four of them together in, in some format, you know, <laughs> however it so comes, coalesces. And, uh, you know, so we want to keep, it's, you know, like we were saying, it's all about the conversation. It's like you and other people that have come here this year we just want to talk to them again next year or the year after that and be like hey look at all this cool stuff that's going on so yeah we're using uh baltimore comic con as our uh our measuring stick, measuring stick. <laughs> well it's on tape now so you guys, yeah, you yeah, guys, we, you guys we, it needs to be out next year baltimore <laughs> cool thanks a lot guys thanks <laughs> Thank for talking so to me thank you eric thanks thank you <laughs> thanks guys